ka ko a pau. I'm Kai Opua Fife with the Kawani Foundation, bringing you another Voices of Truth one on one with Hawaii's future. This week, coming to you from uh, the Ritz Carlton in Kapalua on Maui, and we're here in conjunction with the uh, celebration of the arts. And today, we're very pleased to have with us from the big island of Hawaii, uh, Keone Turaldi. Aloha, Keone. Mahalo for coming. Aloha, mahalo. Yeah, so, so happy to have us. Have you with us here? Uh, as you can probably see, uh, we have a, a pahu, a drum that's pretty hard to ignore, uh, right behind us. And this is uh, this is one of the things that uh, Keone does, and that's what he's doing here at, uh, uh, well, not only here at the Celebration of the Arts, but this is what this is essentially your life. Just about, right now, yes. this is your focus. It is huh? my focus. Yeah. And this been going on for at least um, 17 years in my life and it's an everyday you know, um, trademark mm -hmm. or identity for everybody that um, come from Hawaii, yeah? Yeah, well, the Pahu is definitely uh, our major instrument and uh, I, I know that for years you've been working at this, you say 17 years, uh, and you've been coming here to the Ritz-Carlton for this celebration. How many years does this make for you now? I think like for seven years already. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself, go back and then come forward a little bit uh, so that people can understand how you got to be the person you are today with the interest and the focus you have today. Oh. Well, you started um, from, I was a commercial fishing dive, diver. Fishing a diver. Yeah, huh? commercial yeah. diver. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been doing commercial diving for a few years up in Kauai. Yeah. And, um, I had the bands, I got into an accident, I had the bands from diving, yeah, mm. and that, um, this injury, you know, it put me in the hospital for four years. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so. That's why you're in a wheelchair so today. I, yeah. I'm in a wheelchair today. And, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, in that world, part of that world, that working society, you know, making the people happy, you get an income coming in. And no matter where you go, there's a job, and mm. um, it's a different world. But when happened, when does it happen? When happened? Yeah. And um, that's what happened to me at the bins, and this was you know a few years back. And um, how you said you had the bins? How deep were you diving with uh, 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 Aqualung scuba, tanks. Aqualung? Yeah, Aqualung yeah. tanks. And um, this when happened, I went deep. Um, we was diving. In fact, that weekend. We flew over from Kauai to Oahu that weekend, and um, I called one of my friends up. And you know, when I go back to Oahu, I want to I wanted to get physical because I'm a good racquetball player, yeah. Oh yeah. So I called my friend up that morning, that night before I came. Meet me in the morning. We could play a couple of games, hard, solid games. And um, when they took a break, then um, we got outside a racquetball room. I mean, courthouse in Kaneohe, mm -hmm. and um, we took an air freshener break and. Um, then all of a sudden, one of my friends was passing on by the highway, yeah. and he seen me in in the front door, and he had his boat, and so he seen me turn around, and he asked me if I wanted to go dive mm. with them out um, south Wamanalo. It wasn't something you had planned in this and diving trip. This but. wasn't my plan. Yeah. You know, my plan is go back to Wau, um, go get physical, get yeah. in shape, and go back to the fish market downtown Kekeliki Fish Market, mm -hmm. and. Um, that was it, but I never, you know, that morning and we played and I go dive with my friends and that was going to be a blessing for two boats. So we gone diving that day outside, outside of Rabbit Island, mm -hmm. the third drop now. The third drop is like, you start from 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. Getting down there. Huh? Yeah, so we're going down deeper. So, yeah. well, it's not going gradually down. So. It's just like from the depth down to 180 straight, straight down, yeah. So yeah. that's um, part of the depth was like, oh, that's a deep depth, but not yeah. all the time we dive deep like that. Yeah. And it once in a great while, yeah. 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 But you get divers dive deep, that depth too, but yeah. that happened, you know, you get the bends. Well, you gotta have the right mix of the, the gas, huh? Yeah, but um, you can get the bends, like most everybody know about um, having the bands from diving that or oh, you came up too fast yeah right that's, that's what, what everybody that's what the first thing I think yeah. of yeah. most everybody know about that coming right. up too fast yeah. yeah 
And but for us guys, or all commercial divers that work with tanks, work on the water, right? Yeah, you get the bins working on the water, lifting things, traveling with their weight, taking them there, come back, get some more weights, travel over there, and that's another way you can get bins. Exertion, huh? Exhausting physical exertion. Your body, yeah. yeah. So it's like underwater, you know, you can be sweating. Oh, but yeah. you cannot see it, you cannot feel it, but yeah. it's working under there, yeah. Hmm. But that's another way, yeah, you get the bends. There's two ways coming up fast. Right. And another way, um, you can dive deep depths, 100 feet, 120, mm -hmm. or deeper. You can deep compress different stages. Mm -hmm. You know, different stages go angle, straight up, yeah. Right. But you cannot trade water on top surface, yeah. On deep depth, you cannot trade water on top surface of the period of time, uh -huh. yeah. If the boat not there, when you're down below, you know, you can hear the boat engine. Yeah. You know, but you stay in the same area, right. the same landmark. Yeah. Yeah. So the boat can come back to the same landmark again, look for your bubbles. But by the time I came up, the boat was not there. Was not there. Yeah. So by the time I got to surface, you know, the wind was a little bit blowing, you know, and there was uphill the boat. It was like half a mile away. Uh oh. Yeah. So when things happen like that, you so know, you just had to wait. All divers get a spear. Yeah. I'll wrap on top here and wave. Right. And we start yelling, Ooh, Ooh. take a break, mm -hmm. rest, mm -hmm. trade water, you can float. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just from that exhausting time, mm -hmm. like I say, period of time trading water on top the surface, yeah. that's another way you can get the bends because mm -hmm. from your exhaust um, kicking your legs, right. breathing and all right. your weights on top of you. Right. You know, same thing as you're doing on forty yard dash. Yeah. Poop. Everything, your flotation, stream, bloodstream is just flowing fast again, your heart beat, beating hard. I'll be darned. And um, that's the way Whew. it happened to me. So it was yeah. a combination of things for you, huh? Um, yeah. Or was it mostly well, up on top? Well, just mostly on top. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not working or top. Yeah. It's just deep dips, deep compressing. It's just a period of time trading water yeah. on the surface. So if the boat had been there right away, what would have been? Well, you wouldn't have had to exert yourself yeah. so long staying on top. Yeah, huh? yeah. Oh my god. I goodness. would have just gone on a boat and be normal. Yeah. yeah. But um, when things happen like this, yeah. you know, it's just accepting your injury. Mm -hmm. And it um, depends how bad mm -hmm. you are, where the bubbles are located at the low level, up level, yeah. or could be in your arms, where they build up, joints, huh? yeah. or could be in your brains too. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. yeah. So um, that wouldn't happen, and I told myself that I'm gonna leave, yeah, because yeah. when everything went happen on me, mm -hmm. I went down. Everything shut down in here. Yeah. But I had a little air. I told myself I'm gonna breathe whatever air I could breathe, and at the same time, whatever I could breathe, at the same time my whole body was just wild. Um, out of control, like out of control. Yeah. My whole body is like was on fire, mm -hmm. but it's just everything in my body just compressing back tight again, mm -hmm. which would shut my breathing down. But I had a little breathing, like really had the force, huh? Yeah. And relax to breathe whatever air, but relaxing the mind, mm -hmm. and at the same time handle the pain. Just let mm -hmm. the pain do himself, and my legs can paralyze, my relic can paralyze. But my mind, everything is in the mind, yeah? Yeah, it's working. Controlling the mind. Mm -hmm. And when that went happen, controlling the mind, I just say, okay, I was up, looking up, closing my eyes, and handling the pain, and breathe whatever air. Mm -hmm. And that was going on for, maybe for like, maybe an hour and a half, two, mm -hmm. two hours, mm -hmm. until we reached to the shoreline at, um, I guess that's the marine ocean, Center at um, Rabbit Island, yeah, Makai um, Pier, yeah, at Rabbit Island. Was it too late to to get into those tanks, uh, the decompression tank? I guess it was um, too late by then, or what? Well, for getting into there, I always thought that the Makai Pier at Rabbit Island. Yeah, I thought. Those guys always had on chambers decompression right. tank over there. Yeah, they don't have. Oh, they yeah. never had yeah. one. So they have to either fly me and a chopper down to Kiwalo basement. Yeah, at the chambers over there, yeah. or they could drive me over there. Yeah, but you know, this kind of injuries is it's like every second count yeah. for this person. Yeah, you cannot be writing down what 
dip and what happened and right, right. You know, get this thing get this victim down in the chambers. Um, first thing I'll give another person that had the same injury as me when it happened, oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. The oxygen is free that help a lot, yeah. That helps. Oxygen, yeah. 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 If that don't help, well get them down to the chambers, deep compression tank. Yeah. So did you make it there or, or not? I made it there. Yeah. I made it there. But it couldn't reverse the, um, the damage, huh? It couldn't reverse the damage, but you know, when I into the ambulance from Makapu, Rabbit Island. Yeah. When I into the ambulance, into the ambulance, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it took a while just trying to get information. And Killing time I was on then, a huh? Stretcher and same lying down, yeah. barfing at the same time. Yeah. And trying to breathe whatever air and having pains and you know, it's yeah. like I'm on fire. Yeah. And but once those um, paramedics can take me into the ambulance, mm -hmm. and once they give me the oxygen mask, yeah. I'm breathing, maybe two breathe, and free my whole breathing. And oh, I that did it. Wow. Yeah. Oh, but my leg was still paralyzed, my yeah. right leg, yeah. 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 But just, I, was, I felt good because I could breathe. Right. I wasn't in pain, I wasn't yeah. on fire, you know. It's like a needle scratching my bone. <laughs> Like so you, maybe you knew then you were going to live then, huh? um, well, you're probably doubting. Huh? Yeah. In between that time from the ocean to the shoreline, yeah. I told myself, well, I'm going to make myself breed whatever I can breed for leave, mm -hmm. but I couldn't be dead. So you said you spent how many years in the hospital? Four years. And what, what, what transpired during that time? What was going on when you were in the hospital for all that time? Um, well, when I was like this, from the beginning, um, you know, I, I'm not a myself well be humble yeah don't complain and I told Akua well Akua not gonna, not gonna take me one month or not gonna take me one year to get my strongest strength back yeah it's gonna take me seven to eight years to get my strongest strength back mm -hmm. and lucky I had my arm yeah yeah, yeah. because um, I got worse in a deep compression tank yeah Oh, no kidding. And different treatment, yeah, different doctors have different treatments yeah. on the victim in a tank, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what didn't happen, when happened. Yeah. And I came paralyzed like this down. Oh, wow. On my cross, cross neck. Yeah. Only had my left arm left and my arm. head. Yeah. And then from there, I just told myself, well, when happened, when happened, I don't think anybody else can fix them. But maybe this mine right here. Yeah. But now your right arm's working out but clearly. Yeah. Everything, yeah. So was it a lot of therapy during um, the four years or what? A lot of mind, mental therapy. Mental mind, yeah. yeah. Healing from the mind. Yeah. And a little physical. Yeah. yeah. So um, I had one of my um, mixed partner in a racquetball mm -hmm. partner, yeah. So when she came visit me, mm -hmm. she bought a racquetball can with a magazine and shoelace tie around like a ribbon. Yeah. So when visiting, when the visitors' hours was over, yeah. then when I seen that shoelace around the magazine and the racquetball can, yeah. then I called a nurse. I told a nurse, you know what? You can take the shoelace off for me from the can, the magazine, mm -hmm. and you can tie it together at one end, make a knot, mm -hmm. and the other end, can you tie one pencil and pen, and the other end, can you make a loop? Yeah. And maybe every 15 minutes, if you can help me, you know, put the loop around my ankle and around the bed pole, my shoelace. Yeah. So every 15 minutes, I was exercising my leg. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So my mind was okay, like I said, a cool God, you know, not gonna take me one month, not gonna take me one year, but take me seven to eight years mm -hmm. to get my strongest strength back. Mm -hmm. So when I seen that hat, um, that rope, that shoelace, mm -hmm. then I talked to the nurse, set me up every 15 minutes. So. Every 15 minutes in the hospital bed, mm -hmm. after when I came back from the chambers, every four hours in the morning, which the doctor gave me, mm -hmm. um, made me do that mm -hmm. treatment, mm -hmm. which um, I told myself, well, I don't think this treatment for every four hours for the next month, mm -hmm. that one not going to help yeah. because the damage been done. Yeah. Um, it was a bubble, yeah, bucking off the cell, yeah. and when the bubble popped, Mm -hmm. You make damage around the nerve, around that area, bruised yeah. nerve, yeah. So mm -hmm. that would cause a bruised nerve for make me paralyzed from here down. Yeah. So just moving on, and and that's what my plan was: just yeah. find something to get physical mm -hmm. in the mind, in the body, mm -hmm. yeah. And that was the workout. Yeah. You no, know, each um ankle, mm -hmm. a little around the ankle, and every day, mm -hmm. every 15 minutes, mm -hmm. 
one leg, next, next leg, 15 minutes, and each tour, same thing, 15 minutes each tour. Yeah, mm. but that was an everyday thing. So you kind of developed your own, uh, developed your own physical therapy program, huh? Yes, I did. And <laughs> you know what? And I was a happy guy. You know, yeah. I'm always happy, and I always a, was always a sport guy. Yeah. yeah. And athletic, huh? Yeah, athletic person. Good shape, and yeah. That never really put me down, and even now, yeah. you know, when, uh, I was moving forward. Mm -hmm. And what can make me better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How, what can get make me stronger? Yeah. But at the time, like I say, only had my yeah. arm and my head. Yeah. And um, there's only one thing can move is my. That's what you had to work with. Yeah. Huh? Work with his arm, and yeah. you know. Yeah. And that was every day yeah. and every night exercise. exercise. I'm the nurses tell me go sleep already enough. You know. Yeah. And that was in Queens Hospital. Mm -hmm. And then um, I guess when the treatment from the chambers got completed. Mm -hmm. But I was doing my exercise every day and night. Yeah. Yeah. In a hospital in Queens and and from there and like I say, every day working out my legs, next leg, mm -hmm. next toes, each toe I work on out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Each toe now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much person did that in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. For doing um Take somebody pretty really. stubborn, I think, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or dedicated, or, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So that that's that wouldn't happen and um I got transfer to the rehab of the Pacific in Kukini Hospital. Yeah. And when I got there, you know, I just seen everybody on a wheelchair. So like, oh, yeah. Penny guys on a wheelchair over here. Yeah. You're and not then, the only one there. I huh? wasn't the only one. Yeah. And then from there on, I stayed there for like um, four years. Yeah. Just yeah. Um, physical therapy and right. um, the same thing I was doing. Yeah. And what I was doing on my, my own, beside the workers, the staff on the rehab, right. you know. On my own, I was trying to, you know, lifting my leg up from Queen's Hospital. Yeah. So I lifting up my leg up mm -hmm. and putting them on the side of the bed rail pole. Yeah. yeah. The rails on the side. Yeah. And same thing, I try to move my leg, move my muscles, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. move anything in my body. Period. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know what? With all the exercise I've been doing, with my legs going up and down and my toes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And using the mind. Yeah. And I told myself, you know what? This army strong yeah. and I'm happy yeah. because I'm moving forward and one day my toy moved just a little like this. No kidding. And you know how major victory there, victory, huh? Victory, yeah. happy yeah. and more strength I got and more energy yeah. for move forward and the next step, what is the next step? Okay, next door mm. with the mind. Yeah. 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 And next door went down. Yeah. And next door went down. Next door went down. Mm. Everything was down. Yeah. I couldn't bring them up like yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. But that was a good bird and good, you know, mm -hmm. you know that's, that, that was real good. Mm -hmm. But, and then I tried to lift up my leg, yeah, lift leg up. But gradually, when the toes went started to move down, yeah. gradually my feelings started to come up, move up from my legs, my toes yeah. up, gradually. Yeah. Little by little I had feeling. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. um, I grabbed my leg, put them on a bed pole, try to move my inside thigh muscles to drop my leg down. Yeah. Yeah. And then it took me about a week or two weeks. Train every day and night, same thing. Yeah. Boom, then one day, one, one night, evening, my inside muscles didn't work and my leg was just went fall like that. Oh, yeah. But I, um, it didn't fall by himself, but using my mind yeah. with the nerve and trying to work with the muscles. Like you had a little control. Yeah. Well, how did you get from that? What, how, what, what was it that got you from that state? into doing something like this. Did you go straight to Pahu or did you work for something else for, um, once you get out? What did you well, When I got out of the hospital, I got discharged and um, doing more physical work. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I told myself, well, I know I can go back dive, you know? Yeah. Because I know a lot of friends had the bands they can go back dive. Yeah. But I told myself, well, you know what? I think I'm gonna go back into my Hawaiian culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my young days, um, I used to be in my auntie hula halau, uh, doing, making, uh, playing music, yeah. guitar, singing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, playing drums. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, at, when I got this injury, I told myself, you know what, I'm getting, gonna go back into the culture again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I go back home Kauai, I was living in Kauai, yeah, yeah. and now really, really, um, New Malo Valley, yeah. and then um, I started to make 
point out the facts, point counters, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, that's when my, my feelings came back. I got more movements, movements since I hear already right. from all the time right. in the hospital, yeah. So mm -hmm. um, I got into the culture and doing different Hawaiian artworks. Mm -hmm. And um, I told myself, well, this is me and this is Hawaii yeah. and this is Hawaii yeah. and um, I should stick with it and continue on yeah. the Hawaiian culture and to um, and the life yeah so you made the departure from your life of diving to yeah. the next phase which is immersion in the culture yeah get into the culture yeah. and then um, I got into a few different art making mm -hmm. and after Iniki you know when the, her right. the hurricane Iniki came right and demolish everything yeah. and then I moved to the big island mm -hmm. and then when I continue on with the same work what I was doing mm -hmm. on a big island in Hilo I was all by myself working another Hawaiian implements mm -hmm. yeah and then um, when spirit came to me mm -hmm. and her voice and talked to me and she didn't touch me with her, with her fingers her hand mm -hmm. and she talked to me boy make Hawaiian drums in mm -hmm. Hawaiian, mm -hmm. and you know, I was underneath the lahala trees, mm -hmm. and when I looked around, and oh boy, make Hawaiian drums, and from right there, mm -hmm. I complete finish what I was making, yeah, and then I gave that what I was making to somebody I didn't know, pass it on, huh? pass it on, yeah, yeah. this is for you, huh? mm -hmm. and then the next day I started on collecting, looking for yeah stumps, yeah. coconut trees or the yeah. dead trees yeah. and call my friends up and um, come help me mm -hmm. and they all look at me, what? Coconut tree, what for? Mm -hmm. I'm going to make drums, Hawaiian drums, mm -hmm. the pahu, yeah? yeah? And making drums, how come you all, all of a sudden get into this from yesterday <laughs> to today? Yeah. So well, I'll tell you that later, yeah. how I got into it, yeah. you know, but I'm going to go make drums and I'm gonna, I went down to the store by Anchizo and I look for a guava tree mm -hmm. and um, I cut one small yeah. guava branch for making one for Mali yeah. for um, wood carving. I mm -hmm. uh, got one chisel, a small little chisel and the next day I started off with the drums, make, the drum making. Yeah. Did you have anybody show you anything or did you just start on your own or what? Um, or did you read well, or what? Because I never been around, uh, around drums for a while, right. you know. Yeah. I still have the picture but you know, yeah. not really Okay, mm -hmm. I might have go around go ask. Okay, how about um, how I gonna get the skin? Mm -hmm. And um, because been a while. Since then, you've uh, you've been giving workshops. Yeah. And I, I know here I've seen the presentations that you've made. What the year before last, a big pahu drum that you brought for oh, here. Oh yeah. What would you say to folks who uh, who are watching who maybe? Uh, you know, don't think they can do things. How could you motivate them? What do you, what could you say to them uh, that would maybe make them get out and do something? Well, you know, I, I really mean work with people that, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have the strength. Yeah. yeah? And um, because of different injuries, yeah? Yeah. Um, they really want to do it in the mind and the body wise and so, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they can do a little, yeah. but give them a different things what is easy to make for them yeah yeah and I know they can complete it but you have to do it in, in the mind, mind the and mind. just do it from the yeah. heart yeah. yeah and think why you're doing them yeah, yeah. Um, and stay, it, stay focused and stay focused yeah. yeah and just no matter how long it's gonna take you yeah mm -hmm. it can take you one month like I say it's gonna take you one year mm -hmm. maybe two years but you know what stay get, at it yeah. stay at it no matter if it's one hour a day yeah but it's gonna get completed yeah yeah well, that, brings, that winds us up. For, yeah. I, I wish we could go on. Uh, there's an awful lot more to talk about, but I, I just got to say mahalo nui for being with us. Yeah, mahalo. This yeah. is Kaio Pua Fife, Kawani Foundation with Voices of Truth. Uh, please join us again. Mahalo nui.
Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one on one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24 7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also, view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.